I, um, I grew up in Los Angeles. And um, as most artists, I was sort of implicitly interested in it, right? But um, I grew up in the 60s. And um, when, I, when I say the 60s, we're really talking about a time between 1965 and 1975, which is um, sort of like when Malcolm X got killed, uh, Bob Dylan went electric, and the Beatles hit town. And then in 75, the, um, the Vietnam War uh, stopped, was over. And that's pretty much when what we, what we think of as the 60s ended, okay? So Los Angeles was a hotbed of intellectual and political act activity, right? We had um, an, an artistic, artistic activity. We had Angela Davis, we had um, Harry Edwards, we had, we had uh, love-ins, be-ins, sit-ins. Um, the art game was, 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 was running parallel to the political, um, political uh, activities. And we had this disease, right? Very much like AIDS, very much like COVID. It was called Vietnam. Mm. And anybody could catch it at any time. Uh, and the thing about Vietnam was that when you caught it, your whole family got it at the same time, right? So um, everybody my age probably can remember what their draft number was. And uh, we looked every day to see if, you ne if your number came up see if you caught the disease. Because um, lots of people were dying, coming back uh, drug addicted, disaffected, into a, into a world of, of chaos, sort of like today. And in, anyway, uh, so it was a time of the civil rights movement, the, uh, the uh, feminist movement was starting, ecological movement was going on, um, gay and lesbians were were uh, were uh, were looking looking for their next moves, and so everybody was trying to figure out how they fit into this new paradigm, right? And how can you you contribute? And um, so we were looking for stuff to do, how to participate in this new this new world this new world of uh, of change. And um, we're also, L.A. is also the home of Jackie Robinson, who, um, who famously said that a person's, uh, uh, a person's worth is uh, directly proportional to his, his or her effect on society. And so we were looking for it. And then so photography, for me, sort of fit that bill. I... Um, implicitly understood then, I explicitly understand now, that photography had an evidentiary power to it, which made it different than all other mediums, right? It was proof, in other words. And uh, it was a medium that you could, um, had all the art qualities, but it had education involved with it as well. We felt that then. We, I didn't explicitly understand it like I do now. It, and, and so that seemed like a natural for me. I'd already been painting and drawing it, but that seemed like a natural. And I knew that I wouldn't have to go to school for it because when I first started, because I enjoyed it and felt so strongly about it that I would be diligent about uh, educating myself. And that's one thing that um, you know, you don't need a degree, but you do need an education, right? And so, uh, and how you get it is, uh, is, uh, is individual. You can go to school for it, or you can do it on your own, right? School, of course, is designed so that uh, you've got a program that you undergo that sort of facilitates a, a certain type of uh, experience that maybe can shorten your your um, your educational quest. When you're on your own, you have to do it by trial and error and be very diligent about seeking out information that you need. 
So, um, um, so I thought I'd start out. I thought I'd be a documentary photographer, right, or a photojournalist, which they sort of overlap. And I guess that's where the work behind me sort of comes in. That's a, basically a documentary project that's going to be in the show. What do I enjoy about teaching? Well, pretty much everything. Um, I enjoy the actual teaching part, but more importantly, there's an enabling uh, component to what we call teaching, right? Teaching has um, training sort of uh, connotations associated with it, but enabling has a, a, a more holistic sort of uh, connotation where you uh, open up doors that people can walk through on their own and apply um, and, and apply what you're teaching them personally to, to their own lives. That's the essence of teaching, is um, you, you know, it's one thing for you to explain something. It's another thing for uh, the student to understand what you, you just explained, but it doesn't resonate until the student can actually apply it to their lives. And that's, uh, that's the key to teaching is, um, in, my, in, my, in my estimation, the key to effective teaching is uh, uh, enabling students to, to uh, personally apply uh, the curriculum. Okay. What's the main thing I want them to leave the exhibition with? Um, well, I'd like the, the, um, the viewer to leave the exhibition thinking about new ways of seeing the world, right? Um, an expansion of their um, of their understanding of what the world might be. Um, that's why the um, the exhibition is entitled "Abstract Truth," right? Truth ha um, might be defined as things as they actually are, or thing as it actually is, and that's a concrete. And that's sort of a concrete uh, notion. But personal truths, as they actually are, can differ radically. My life, as it actually is, which is true, it could be completely different from your life as it actually is. And so, and most people don't understand that. Most people think that everybody's life is like their life. Well, everybody's life should be like their life. There's something wrong with them if, if, if it isn't. And so what I'm doing here is, is trying to um, at once show a, a different context for life while normalizing the black experience as well at the same time. Right? There's no recognizable icons of... Uh, of, uh, of black history in these uh, in these works, they're all regular people. They're all sort of, which can be in their own lives, giants of society. 